back when I started Astra, um, back at the uh, end of 16, early 2017, um, I looked at the market and I saw a lot of satellites the size of uh, the lo loaves of bread, right? So little um, satellites like the Dove satellite from Planet. Uh, there weren't uh, Starlink class satellites, right? And Starlink, the first generation of Starlink satellites were, were coming in at over a couple of hundred kilograms. They've gotten bigger. So satellites have gotten bigger, right? So companies have realized uh, they want bigger satellites with higher resolution images, with more bandwidth, more capacity. And so what we've started to see now is a number of constellations deploy satellites that are more around 500 kilograms. And so our previous rocket, which it's kind of off screen here, you can't really see it, um, you know, could maybe deploy a, a group of satellites uh, that weighed up to uh, 50 or 60 kilograms, uh, maybe 100 if we really put a lot of energy into, the, into the refining the rocket. But the rocket was very small. And the problem is, is you know, if you can only ever maybe throw a maximum of 100 that's kilograms. That's the one that's spot open right now? Uh, this one is the new Rocket 4 fairing. So um, I don't know if you can see the... Yeah, I can yeah, see the one on the oh, edge. Yeah. Oh, you can. Yeah, that's Rocket 3. So that's that's great, actually. So you can see the difference between Rocket 3 and Rocket 4. So you could probably put a very large refrigerator uh, in Rocket 4's fairing, um, or maybe a small, like a golf cart kind of size satellite. So it's a much larger, it's over 100 times the volume and uh, it, wow. at least 10 times the, the mass. So our initial flights of Rocket 4 will do six to 700 kilograms, and then we'll go up to over 1,000 kilograms per launch with the new rocket. And so, you know, one of the one of the things that I learned uh, was we did rocket one, then we did rocket two, then we did rocket three, then we did rocket four. So we've had four generations of rockets in a time scale that most companies barely get one done. And that was a little too fast. And so we really uh, we took our time in this latest generation because we realized that uh, there's making a rocket work once probably one of the hardest things to do. M many countries haven't yet cracked this. Once you make it work once, um, having the uh, the next 10 also work is a completely different problem, right? That's a problem of um, supplier quality and reliability engineering and the rigor uh, that, that you've used in your manufacturing process to ensure that all of the rockets are exactly the same. Because if there are any differences um, or if you're um, unable to um, ensure that you have enough margin spread around, uh, then an in-flight condition that doesn't affect a launch um, might affect the next launch. And so you really have to, you, know, the, it, you have to put an enormous amount of rigor all the way up front um, when you look at your initial understanding of potential mm. failures and their effects. Um, and, you, and you think about how you're testing it and providing test coverage so there's no quality escapes.